Hi guys and welcome back to Hilltop Farm and welcome to lesson five in Wicca. This week we are going to be um, starting to concentrate on a bit more of the meditation side of things um, and to do with mind power and being able to uh, harness harness that power and build build on that power. I hope you've all started um, collecting all of your ritual tools. Remember what I said though, new age shops and Wiccan supply shops, whether it be online or in your local town or city, they these are fantastic places and the energy is great. You often meet uh, people there that are knowledgeable and can help you with lots of information and so forth. And their, their stuff is great, I'm not saying not to buy things from them, that, that's certainly fantastic. But do remember, particularly with some of these more expensive and larger items, that you need to be checking your charity shops, second-hand shops, garage and yard sales, and Craigslist, Gumtree, whatever, online second-hand services available in your area or your country because you really can save an absolute fortune and you can pick up some really good stuff too uh, with character and, and what have you um, a couple of people have actually emailed me to talk about you know how how to make it their own how to cleanse it and all the rest of it there are many there are cleansing rituals you can do there are um, things when there's a full moon and to do with holy water. There's all sorts of things you can do, but we're not up to that stage. So at this stage, all I will tell you is give things, as long as, long as it can be washed, give things a quick rinse in either rainwater or spring water. You did that, that will help cleanse them. Keep them away from other people so other people don't touch them. But only you do and make sure you handle them uh, every day. And next time there's a full moon, which there is one coming up, ooh, I think it's the 28th, 29th of May. If you get a like an oven tray or something like that, you cover it in, cover it in aluminium foil or aluminium foil I don't know if you've noticed one side of foil is shiny one side's dull so you put a shiny side up put it outside or on a windowsill where the moonlight is going to shine on it um, put it there under the full moon and that will also cleanse it um, and until we get to more complicated things that's what I recommend you do with anything you get, particularly if it's second hand. So, start collecting, but it is not important that you spend a lot of money. It is not important that you have everything at once. You will find throughout your, your path, you will collect many, many items to help you with, with uh, the craft. It's just one of those things that you, you just do. You just do. Don't try go and try and go out and buy everything at once and embezzle the household funds or anything. Just buy it as you can afford it and slowly collect it. And what you don't have, you improvise. And there's a lot of things that you will use on altars and things for festivals and what have you um, that, that are natural. You know, they're flowers and leaves and bark and stones and water and food that you're going to eat anyway and so don't stress there's plenty of time to start collecting anyway let's start the lesson because we're already five minutes in and nothing's happened yet okay as i said this lesson is going to be about the power of positive thinking i believe that the power of the gods lie within all of us i believe life should be a celebration of this power of love and of joy. Witchcraft, or the craft, is both a religion and a system of magic. 
As a religion, its purpose is to put the individual in harmony with, with the divine creative principle of the universe. As a system of magic, its purpose is to achieve practical ends by the use of mind power. Have you ever wondered why some people are always lucky, while others struggle on and never seem to get anywhere? Have you ever thought there might be a fundamental cosmic law governing these things? Well, there is. The ideas contained in this lesson may seem revolutionary, even subverse, but when fully mastered, they will enable you to lead a charmed life. How we think affects how we are and how our lives work out. This was understood by the ancients who developed this wonderful system of believing that reality works by keeping up morale and making things happen. In this lesson, I want to show you just how essential a positive, optimistic attitude to life really is. Then, in later lessons, you will learn how to use the various techniques of witchcraft to empower your life. Wicca is a way of life, but more important than that, it is a way to control your life. The ideas contained in this one lesson will transform your life if you let them. Can you grasp the earth-shaking idea that reality is not fixed, that it does not control us, but we control it? For the last 300 years or so, scientists have been telling us that matter, or the solid stuff of the universe, is all there was. Nothing else was important. Materialism, with its two great constants, time and matter, ruled the day. More recently, scientists have discovered the idea of quantum physics. They were very surprised to discover subatomic particles varying their behavior according to the observer. In a nutshell, they saw matter obeying the mind. It may have been a great shock to them, but we witches have been saying the same thing for centuries. These days, we have the New Age movement saying much the same thing. However, there's nothing new about New Age philosophy. It is just our old ideas being rehashed. The truth is, we all create our own reality according to our beliefs and expectations. Our subconscious minds have one great purpose, to always prove us right. If we accept pain and suffering, we get pain and suffering. But if we really expect a blessed life filled with love and abundance, we get that instead. The trouble is, we have been programmed since childhood to be cynical, to believe that we must labor hard to earn a crust of bread, that pleasure is sinful and that pain will get us a place in the kingdom of heaven. Even some misguided witches believe that we must suffer to learn. What nonsense. Our purpose on this earth plane is to be happy all the days of our lives and to make others happy too. If you can believe that and do that, then you will have a good journey. But we have all taken a lot of brainwashing on board. The bricks usually take a good bit of shifting. In this course, you will find some really good brick shifting techniques that have stood the test of time. You will learn how to cast spells to solve urgent problems. But to solve chronic, long-term situations, the best answer is to change your fundamental beliefs about how the world works and what you can expect to enjoy during your time here. Life can be really great and you owe it to yourself to make it great. By working on yourself, you will come to realize that by programming your mind, you will restructure your life. When practiced correctly, Wicca can help you do just that. All the happiness, wealth, love and success you want are yours by right. You can have every good and every wholesome thing you choose to have. The choice is entirely your own. It always has been, but perhaps you did not realize it until now. 
You can build whatever life you want for yourself. You need not accept the implied limitations of your past, your education, or the social conditions into which you were born. Thought is creative. The conditions and events of your life so far have been the results of your past thinking. Now with this course, you will have the tools to reprogram yourself for the future you really want. You will no longer accept the limitations of your past, of those imposed upon you by others. Rather, you will do your own thinking, not allowing the opinions of others to hold you back. You have the choice to entertain only thoughts that are helpful, creative and uplifting. In this way, you will build a dynamic life for yourself. As you become more empowered by these teachings, it is important that you choose your goals carefully. Because from now on, you will achieve them. You can achieve every good, wholesome thing you set out to achieve. You achieve what you choose to achieve. Once we know that, we create our own reality. We know not to put obstacles in the way of our own success and happiness. We take absolute personal responsibility for every event and condition we create. We can never be hurt by others unless we choose it to be. There is nothing to fear except fear itself. We are the captains of our own destiny. We need never feel jealous or envious of others. Whatever we want, we are perfectly happy for everyone else in the world to have as well. We do not need to benefit at the expense of others, we can create what we want ourselves. Loving oneself is natural and wholesome. All we have to do to increase our happiness is to love ourselves enough to accept it. We have the right to be ecstatically happy for the rest of our lives. It's our game. We are free to play and win. The, I now have seven principles um, that have been taken from a shamanistic path, a path uh, I think uh, are quite poignant, so I'm including them in here for everyone to take on board. Okay, seven shaman principles. Number one, the world is what you think it is. Positive thoughts attract positive people and events and negative thoughts attract negative people and, and events. And if you think about your past, you can probably see that is true. Number two, there are no limitations. We are only limited by limitations placed on ourselves due to preconceived ideas that we can or cannot do something. These ideas have often been placed on us by our parents, by teachers, uh, by peers, people calling themselves friends, often spouses. And you need to go past that, ignore that. If it's something you want, you tell yourself you can do it and you strive for it. Number three, energy flows where attention goes. Meditation and hypnosis are simply different techniques for doing the same thing. Refocus your attentions towards more positive beliefs and expectations. Those aspects of your present experience which seem enduring are the effect of habitual, sustained, focused attention carried on by your subconscious. Thought is energy and one kind of energy can be converted into another. Number four, now is the moment of power. Karma exists and operates only in the present moment. It is your beliefs, decisions and actions today about yourself and the world around you that give you what you have and make you what you are. Thanks to memory, we may carry over habits of body and mind from day to day. But remember each day is a new creation and any habit can be changed at any moment even if it isn't easy. If you select out of the immense resources of your gene pool those characteristics which best reflect 
your present beliefs and intentions. Your parents' social background have nothing to do with your present, but what you believe about the now and how you react to those beliefs does. Think about the many people you know, most of them will fall into the following category. People living today aren't even here. Most of their attention is focused on the past or the future. Because of this, they diminish their awareness of the present moment. Their power to affect the present also decreases. Five, to love is to be happy with. Love exists to the degree that you are happy with the object of your love. The other bit comes from fear, anger and doubt. To be deeply in love means to be deeply connected and the depths and clarity of the connection increase as fear, anger and doubt are removed. Your subconscious takes any praise or criticism it hears to heart. Even if it is directed elsewhere and even if you're the one saying it. Each criticism separates you and decreases your awareness from what you criticize until you end up responding to a second recreation of your own that may no longer resemble the original. To counteract this, when someone criticizes you, praise yourself and believe in yourself. Six, all power comes from within. For every event that you experience, you creatively attracted through your beliefs, desires, fears and expectations and then react to it habitually or respond to it concisely. This does not mean that you are to blame for every abuse or injury because you are probably not conscious of your negative attitudes, beliefs and expectations. It also does not mean that any other person is innocent. Seven. Effectiveness is the measure of truth. The means determine the end, not the end justify the means. What is really important is that it works. Every problem has more than one solution. If the goal is important to you, you should never give up, just change your approach. The next section is to know thyself. To know thyself is to know the way. That was a quote that was written above the oracle at Delphi in ancient Greece. I expect we all think we know ourselves better than anyone else possibly could. But humans have many unique talents and one of those is the ability to lie to oneself. Given the task of listing our good and bad qualities, some of us can come up with a long list of bad ones, mostly imaginary and not one being too negative. Some of us can come up with long lists of good points, again with lots of imagination and wishful thinking. We can run off such lists so quickly, examine them cursorily, that they mean little. Part of the problem is that these lists divide a person's nature into good and bad. People are more truly a sum of these and cannot be divided. Some good aspects taken from extremes are very bad for a person. A giving, selfless person may tend to give so much they have nothing left for themselves. Some bad aspects in appropriate measure are healthy and necessary. Imagine how much better off a person would be with a touch of selfishness. Both go into making each of us a unique individual, acknowledging the good things in our lives that come from our bad qualities. Both go into making each of us a unique individual, acknowledging that the good things in our lives that come from bad qualities or habits and discovering the amount of bad in our lives caused by our good qualities and habits make us more aware of our actions and thus better able to act well. It makes us happier, more balanced people. 
We accept that we are not perfect. We accept the bad instead of trying to hide it or deny it. We use it for betterment of self. When you print this out, there's a very good little diagram down the pot bottom of the page there that breaks that whole um, paragraph down into a very simple visual uh, diagram of the yin and yang symbol that explains it very very simply so make sure you either download this onto your computer or print it out so you can really study that because that's what it's all about moving on to this week's assignment now is a good time to start thinking about keeping a journal if you haven't started one already you can record all your magical activities, visualizations, ideas, rituals, etc., and their results. You can also include all the significant events in your life as they happen. You will be surprised just how much you will learn and grow just by keeping such a record. This week, make a list of all your current attitudes, beliefs, and expectations. Be absolutely honest with yourself and tell it like it is. Write down everything about how you see the world and your chances right now. Once you have such a list, you can begin to make the necessary changes by using the techniques in this course. Change the way you think and you will change the way things are for you. Okay, now here's what I want you all to do. Okay, firstly, Make a list of your good and bad points, habits and aspects. Be honest, take your time and do major soul searching. No one else will ever see or need to know what is on that list. So be brutally honest. Two, for every good quality, expand on how it can be or has been a source of trouble in your life. For every bad quality, expand on how it can be or has been a benefit in your life. Now I want you to do this for every single item on the list. Another little quote that I like that I stuck on the bottom of here, you can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the last one. Meaning you just keep repeating bad habits and nothing changes. Okay, now that's the, basically the end of the lesson. Now, I'm including in this lesson, as usual, there's usually, I mean that, as you know, it's the lesson uh, five print off or print out. Uh, the link for that is in the description down below. Also, I usually have a, like a secondary thing. This is the other one. This is the other print off. Now, this is gonna, hopefully help you to attract more positive energy isn't always easy so there's a few tips here on how to attract positive energy um, you should still be doing your meditation once a day um, your me time as I call it try and incorporate this into that so I'll just quickly go through it okay attracting more positive energy Positive energy could come in the form of a new job, new relationship, sudden burst of happy energy, or just about any new form. The following is a list of things to do when you're feeling stuck in a rut or depressed. Try and clear away of some of the stale negative energy. Maybe clean through your belongings and get rid of the ones you no longer need. Forgive all past angers and ask to be forgiven by anyone who's angry at you. Some people see that as a difficult one. I myself have people in my life that I've fallen out with that it's just not feasible to approach them and forgive them or ask for forgiveness in return. But you don't have to meet these people. Do it as part of your meditation. And if you feel you have wronged them in some way, Forgive yourself because you deserve to be forgiven. If you're wrong and you've acknowledged you're wrong, that's all it takes. So acknowledge that to yourself. 
say goodbye to old bricks. And by bricks, I mean these walls, we metaphoric walls we build up to screen people and things out or in to our lives. If you're one of those people who, routi who routinely thinks, oh, I couldn't do that, or I'm not good enough, then you're sabotaging yourself. Can you think of where you picked up those beliefs? Start noticing when you put yourself down and do your best to change your way of thinking. You can do what you are meant to do and you are good enough. Start focusing on positive things. Write a list of things you can do. Use positive affirmations. Use positive affirmations such as I am a wonderful creative person or I have everything I need to enjoy my here and now. Affirmations are short positive comments that are made in the present tense. You say I am not I will be. These can be written down or repeated throughout the day or however you find best works for you. Use creative visualization. If you can't picture yourself being happy, how do you expect to become a simple visualization might simply be sitting quietly and picture a simple visualization might simply be sitting quietly and picture a light shining down over you, filling you with joy. Visualization is actually a very crucial and important point in spell casting. If until you've mastered visualization, your spell casting won't work. So that's a very important one for you to start visualizing um, not, in this case they're talking about being happy but whatever it is you want or you desire or you want to change whether it be about yourself or about your environment don't try and change the people around you they're responsible for their own destiny but you can change the environment around yourself use visualization to do it you have to really visualize what the finished result will look like what the outcome will be um, whatever the case may be, you have to get that in your mind and truly visualize it. Because once you can do that, when we get to the part about spell casting, it'll be much, much easier for you to achieve your goals. So bear that in mind. Send positive energy out to other people. Do good deeds in secret. If to the universe and trust the universe will be generous in return. Basically, no one likes a show off. You, if you've um, you know, got a friend in hospital having an operation, you can cast a spell and send them good energy to help with their recovery and what have you. And that's fine. But to then go and visit the hospital and tell them you've done it, it actually takes some of the power away. Because people tend to behave like that in order to be praised for their efforts. A true witch and one that is casting efficient spells doesn't need that praise. They get the praise in the end result. That's the end, seeing the end result is what makes them feel good. Not the pat on the back from other people. To so stop looking for a pat on the back. Stop looking um, to be validated, if you like. Validate yourself, because that's all that's important. You don't need anyone else's validation. Be kind to your body. Your body is a marvellous, wonderful part of you. Treat it kindly. I have to work on this one myself. The wonderful part of you. I just wish there wasn't quite so much of it that was wonderful. But anyway, I am working on this. Treat it kindly. Drink enough water. Give it loving exercise and the nutrients it needs. One of the ways I do this is by throwing various fruits into a blender and making 
a thick, healthy mixture of fruits to drink. Snack on carrots, a healthy body is magic. And it's true, it really is. We all have our comfort food and, and we like yummy things to make us feel better and all the rest of it. But if you've had a couple of days of uh, not overeating and eating healthier type foods, you do feel better. So, a healthy body is magic. And last of all, be thankful. Say thanks for all the wonderful things in your life. I think that sums it up very well. So that is it for this lesson. As I say, it's all about now um, trying to change your thought processes to, in to enhance your way of life which as they incorporate things on this about attracting positivity into your meditation and trying to be conscious of it as you're going through your day and living your life. Be conscious of all these points and try and strive for them. Um, and as I say, your homework is basically, and it's going to be look very difficult for some people, would be a very emotional Thing that you have to face but you can do it you have the support of us here at the school fellow students for support anyone who needs help can leave comments comment in the comment below or if it's a bit personal or private you don't want to do that you can send me an email the email address is down below um, and I will respond to you directly. But as I say, there's a lot of soul searching to be done um, and a really examine why you do certain things you do and put the blame where it needs to be. And as I say, if that means blaming uh, one or both of your parents or your best friend or your partner, that's fine to do that. It doesn't mean that you love them or care about them any differently. We all, as parents, um, instill things in our children. I'd like to think most of us do it with the best intentions, but sometimes it's not necessarily the best thing for the child in hindsight, but the parent doesn't necessarily know that when it's happening. And you can say something, and we've all done that too, in total innocence not meaning any harm and you don't realize the damaging harm has actually caused someone so that's important too but nonetheless if you if it has harmed someone it's harmed someone i mean end of story so you can you can write all this down you can blame all those people make them responsible you don't have to no one's saying to confront them this is just to get it straight in your own head and once you've done that, that's okay. You're not actually going to um, fall out with anybody about it. It's just to get it straight in your own head. And that's okay. That concludes the lesson for today. Thank you for joining us. I hope you're enjoying um, this course in Wicca. Uh, we're getting close now to uh, or closer, I should say, to the next festival. So I'm trying to plan the lessons so that we're going to cover uh, certain things in time as, as full moons approach and as um, and as festivals approach. So, because people have been asking me, you know, what do I, what do I, what have I got to get for, for Sam Hain and what, are, uh, sorry, Yule and what have I got to get for this? And you'll be told what to get and when to get it. And as I say, this is your first year as uh, a student, which no one expects you to have all the right equipment, and you, we will just go through and you improvise and you, you you know your first year with each festival it'll all be new and you will um, 
bluff your way through. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. There's no hard and fast rules, as I've said to you before. Now, as I say, that's your lot for today. In the description down below, you will find a link to the playlist for this series of lessons. You will find a link to get both of these, the lesson five and the, the other handout. They'll be down there. There's the email address of the school and you also find a link to our Patreon, well, into our Patreon page. You will also find a link to our affiliate with the book depository in the UK. Um, any books that you need, particularly, particularly Wiccan, but don't have to be, can be any book you need. If you come onto the channel, onto one of the lessons, you go to the description below, find the link, you click on there and you go into the book depository through the channel. Then any, then you select your purchases from there. Any purchase you make through the channel will mean the book depository will give us a couple of dollars to help, help fund these lessons. So would really appreciate you buying any books you need from there um, through our channel. <laughs> if you're anything like any other witch, you will be collecting books and you will as the lessons progress. So as I say, please, please, please go through the book repository through our channel to make your book purchases. Well, that's it for another week from me. Uh, as I say, thank you for joining us. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on other videos and the bell next to it so that you get notified uh, when we release a video. And until next time, it's goodbye from Hilltop Farm. See ya!